and welcome to Buckman's Model Mania. Today we're going to be working on the Moomin House issue 56 and it is from Diagostini. Let's go ahead and get the book open. I've already opened the parts and I've done some sanding like I've been talking about to get the uh, white paint off. But unfortunately, let me go ahead and get this open. Unfortunately, when I was sanding part of this down, I broke it. This little ring here, which is part of the back of the mirror. I was trying to sand it down, and I actually broke the piece in half. You can see it's still, it's still white. It'll still go together. It's just that, unfortunately, I broke it. I believe, let me double check. Yeah, that actually goes on the back of this piece, so it'll be fine. And you can see that all the most, or maybe not all, but a lot of the stuff that I've been working on recently. So the first thing I want you to do is you're going to take this wall from the last stage, and we're going to get panel J. I'm just looking to make sure I've got it facing the right way. Well, here, let's go over the parts first. You saw the ring. This is the mirror that's going to actually get, um, it's going to come out of there and get glued in. That blue is covering the mirror itself. I believe. Man. Almost looks like this is the mirrored finished. Let's look again forward in the book which is something I don't do a lot of. Oh yeah. Let's see. That ring, this ring that I broke is actually going to be on the front side. Still no big deal. It's going to go on here. this like I said it will hold the mirror in place once I have it glued in place it will be fine and once I paint it you'll never see the fact that it was broken and then these pieces dog hair not sure how the dog hair got in there these pieces will go on the uh, side of the cabinet here where these slots are to hold the mirror in place using these pins. But that's not what we're working on right now. Okay, so we have panels K. I didn't notice that before, but that happened with the, some of the other ones. That one's kind of got a little bit twist to it and it's interesting because it's actually because it was popped out of here all of them actually have a slight twist to them and you can see that each one has the letter for its part part letter on here so this is J H I and K it makes it a lot easier to put them in the right place. So first one that's going to go on here, and because because this is a large flat piece, you cannot wet it down like you do usually with wood. It would warp all kinds of di different ways, it would not work out very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue to the frame. I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to clamp it down like that. You know, clamp it down so that it will hold shape as I have done in um, in previous episodes issues whatever you want to call them and let's see 
It says use wood glue before. I've always used white glue. I didn't have wood glue. Just noticed I got a little bit of a little bit of a lip there on the uh, from glue. Actually, I got it pretty well with my thumbnail. I'm just making sure that there's nothing that's going to hold this up, like right here. I don't want it to be bowed up in one spot. Okay, so, and what I'm going to do, because you've got J goes here, K will go here, H and I will go on the back side. I'm going to go ahead and glue, I'm going to glue the first one, I'm going to do J on camera, and then the rest of them I'm going to do off camera. Ah, okay. Just like I said, we're just going to apply some glue here. Just a thin bead. It doesn't have to be very much. This stuff actually grabs really well. And it's going to seep out when I clamp it. You want to get every board. One of the key things is that these, this one right here, you want to make sure you get enough on there because you have to clamp that one. And it's a little bit odd. I got a little bit of extra glue on here onto the... Um, onto the tab that sticks down below. But the, the one there, you have to clamp that one especially because it's a little bit in an awkward position to clamp. So let's start here, making sure that I'm flush at the bottom. Flush at the top. Sorry, I'm off camera. I just realized that. And the tendency is going to be for this small tab here to pop up. You want to make sure you get that glued down in place. Like I said, I think I said, if you watched more of this series of on the house on the movement house I've done this several times before you can see there the glue is pushing a little bit out which is fine Get down here a little bit further over because we want to make sure that the thing the uh, wood makes the most contact it can towards the middle of the uh, framework. Okay, so that one should be good right there, so that this does not shift all over the place. The clamp, that clamp doesn't go anywhere. I'll put a clamp above and below it. And there, I, I think it was Eric that made a comment before that there are so many clamps, and there are. You want to make sure this thing stays in place. You can see all the wood, all the, the panel is attached at all points, and that's, that's what you want. So now let me pause the camera while I, let me pause the camera. When I come back, I'll have all the wood on here, all the panels on here, and then we'll go forward with the uh, wallpaper. So, I'll be back. Okay, the uh, last panel is being is glued on there. It's being it's drying right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip a couple pages over. 
I'll let that dry and then we'll do the um, wallpaper afterwards. But we're going to flip a couple pages over and we're going to cut these supports apart and then we're going to um, glue the mirror in and get that part of the um, get that part of this stage done. You can see there are a couple of really small notches in there so that you can cut these parts apart. Wow, that's actually pretty substantial slot there. And of course, it just broke a little bit. Not a big deal because that goes down inside of the uh, nightstand or makeup stand or whatever you want to call it. There we go. So let me sand these nubs down a little bit. It says to paint them first. I'm just looking. Okay, so we're going to paint these. Let's go ahead and get this frame put together. And to hide the white paint, I get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and you can see there's two sides to this. One with details on it, one with no details on it. This ring goes on the front that has the details on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the white side down. This I need to be very sparing if I can in the glue. What I'll probably end up doing instead is taking a Q-tip and cleaning most of it off because it's going to seep out. But now I can push these two parts together on here and it won't matter that it's broken. And that's that's the risk of these really delicate parts. I'll take this all the way down here where it's supposed to be. Q-tip, clean it out of the details there, clean it out of here, I'm just looking, what I'm trying to do is get the ring around the inside like that, pretty much equidistant all the way around, go ahead and take the Q-tip and clean Excess glue out of there. Just double checking. That should be good. So now let me pause real quick while I get set up with paintbrush. And we'll get these parts painted. I'm not going to glue them to a stick like they do because I'm actually going to paint both sides. So I will be right back. So I've mixed the paint. Might have been, might be a little bit too thin, but we'll see in a minute. Can't really take care of the char on this piece like I like to because of the uh, all the little details in there and the paint uh, I think the paint might be a little thin that's okay we'll just do multiple layers especially in the detail area There's the first one, if I can get it to stay in place. And yeah, 
let me add a little bit of paint here. I overthinned it. It paints well in the uh, white there. That's a little bit better. Still not sticking very well to the charred areas from the laser cutter. But we'll see how it turns out. It's going to require multiple coats regardless because of the um because of the shape because the paint the whole nine yards hopefully they're not going to take a long time to dry actually this is a this is accepting the paint a lot better than those other pieces And what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up painting around where the clips are. And then I'll come back, move the clip, and paint again. The back is not near as important, and I'm not going to paint down inside the groove. Because the mirror is going to be in there. these detailed areas up here on the top of the mirror again it's going to be kind of like the same thing on the details areas on the other two pieces the key about that though is that those details here are going to have something blocking your direct sight to them so let me set this one over here Go back to the first one, which is not in some places it's dry, some places it's not quite dry. But we'll put another coat of paint on here. Especially these side pieces, the detail areas. The same for the second one. This one is as well still pretty wet. Doesn't take a long time between coats for these. And it's it's not gonna be right out in the open. At least I don't think so. It doesn't have to be perfect for these detailed pieces. I just want it to be pretty good. We've got some running plank paint here. The sides of this should be the only thing that I still have to do. And I could make it a lot easier on myself by not thinning this paint at all, but then you end up with clumps. Craft paint is really bad for how clumpy it gets really quick. Okay. Set this over here for, the, for a minute. And we'll go ahead and take all these clips off. Doesn't take long for the paint to set up. And if I had to, I actually I was going to say if I had to, I might be able to. I'm pretty sure if I had to pull these apart, I would never be able to get them off. But you can see now how it is completely joined. This, this, this right. The mirror here, turn this around, 
is what it has you do. What it says to do in the instructions. If I can get it to, to uh, go in. As you put the tabs in, and that's what's, it's kind of funny because every floor so far has done this type of a thing is once you put the actual parts together, it warps it a little bit. And I think it's because of the curved walls. The important thing is that wasn't, that didn't sound good. don't think anything was breaking there. It might have been the seam. But the important thing here is they want you to set this over here. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Hopefully the paint won't dry too badly on the brush. But they want you to run a line from the center of the short side hole. This hole here, they want you to run a line up here because what that's gonna do is that's gonna show where your wallpapers are gonna change due to the wall. You kind of center it on here and then run it up the wall like that. see runs it up the wall right there let me see not sure what that was that cracking sound everything looks good so we have two pieces of wallpaper or th three pieces sorry No wallpaper that we would ever actually put in our own houses, I don't think. We've got these trees. Got a shell. That looks like a bathroom tile or bathroom paper if I ever saw one. And then we've got more little trees. So what we're going to do, let's see, on JNK, be applied, note the orientation of the wallpaper pattern, position of the wallpaper on this line, if there's a small gap between the papers, don't worry, it won't be visible upon assembly. We've done this before, what we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to make sure it is even with the top and the bottom, and then we're going to push it over this direction. First, actually I'm going to do this one because this one doesn't have a big gap where the door is. And they want the notes to be upside right and the shells to be facing the top. Again, this is, this is one of those things that Peeling this paper apart, the backing off this paper can sometimes be a pain. But you also want to be very careful with how you do this because you don't want to get wrinkles. So we got the paper correct. We'll line it up here, top and bottom. Before I push it across, make sure that it is lined up all the way across. Cross looks good. And it is literally directly on that line. So now, like I've done before, I'm going to just smooth it down. I'm going to try a little bit. This doesn't work out very well most 
so far it hasn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my knife oops, and climb up the wall while I'm trying to cut the paper. Do it again. You can tell wherever I missed it. Ripped a little bit, it's okay. Like I said, you can tell where I missed it. There's a cut mark there and a cut mark right there. Be okay. That is actually the outer wall. Hopefully they have some sort of a cap that goes over that, not just the wallpaper or just the wall. So now we're going to take this, make sure your tree's upside right. Do the same thing. Come on. There we go. Got it. Make sure I got it going the right direction. Same type, and th this is the same type of thing that I have to do on the Disney dollhouse as well. So now I'm going to line it up top and bottom here. It says, don't worry if you have a small gap because the other wall, the wall that comes out here, is going to cover that. So let me push this across here, and it's a little bit more tricky on this side because you don't have anything in the middle here to push against. Push it across like that. I like the fact that they put that the seam right there. Some places the seam is really pretty obvious. Here it's not. Uh, let me see. There it is. Let's choose the scalpel this time instead. There we go again, slicing the wood. That should be good. I'm going to set this on a flat area. Sorry if you can't see. But what I'm doing is exactly the same thing. The reason I want to make sure it's on a flat is so that I'm not trying to fight against the wallpaper being in the air. Cut that out of there like that. A little bit rough, but that's okay. There's going to be a door frame in there. We'll stick this paper, this back on here. Don't expect I'm going to use it for anything, but just in case I need it. And let's see. Yeah. Little trees. Try to leave roughly an equal amount left and right edges. Glue them over the end of the wall. Oh, I see why, because this is the flat side. And it says to fold and tuck the edges over the wall, over the edge. Not going to worry about it. Already cut it off. If it comes down to it, I'll figure something out if I have to. I don't expect I will. I just know that from previous um, stages, that overlap does not stick down very well. So I'm going to overlap just a hair here. my best to make sure that not, not overlapping at all there. Doing my best to make sure that we are straight on here. See there, there's there's a small overlap. 
and you can see it's peeling up because the glue on this on the wallpaper is not that strong so now we'll go same thing as I did on the other side just kind of push it across making sure that it's flat against the wall as it goes making you across the door opening And making sure it's as flat as possible and there I started to drift a little bit did not mean to pull that loose like that started to drift actually I started to drift way back at the beginning of this once it's down though you can't pull it back up because it will wrinkle I've got some bad wrinkles on one of the pieces going to block a little bit maybe on the ceiling that's going to push right down this is going to be down where you can't see it not going to be too noticeable push this side down a little bit see if it will stay and then bring it back over here it's a little bit different than how I have to do this in. cutting loose it doesn't have to be perfect because the door frame but I want it as close as possible a little bit less straight then the other one, let's get that out of the way. Overall, that should be fine. So let's bring the paint back over, re wet the brush. We'll start with the mirror itself. Second coat should make it look good. Should be good enough. I'm going to have to come back and do that part later. The back looks good. Right here in the center is where I can't get to because of the clip. And on here it doesn't matter that much because these are actually these tabs are actually going to go down into the cabinet itself. Might have to do a third coat of it on this and do it with just straight craft paint on the thing. But on a lot of the Moomin House, I have the parts look homemade because it's not perfect. So there's one. Let's do this side real quick. I'm going to pause, let this stuff dry. I'll come back after I probably do one more coat of paint on here just to make sure everything is good. And we'll put it together. Okay, let me pause. I'll clean up my paint supplies and we'll go from there once the uh, painting is dry. Okay, well, alrighty then. Struggled a little bit, did it on camera, I thought. I put, got the pins in, took a little bit of effort, 
thought I had the camera running. I actually had hit, instead of hitting pause, I hit stop, which did not unpause the camera. It stopped it. But you can see the uh, dressing table for Mama Moomin now has the mirror on it. You can see back here the pins actually go in there. And I was using the... Um, using one of these CNC bits to get the hole open. And then I put the uh, wall back on here. All that was like the last 10 to 15 minutes. But everything is now in place. Got the cleanup. This is ready. This will come back in the next stage. We'll be doing some books onto it. Like I said, my friends, that is all there is to do in stage 56. Hope you're enjoying this. If you do, like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified of any time I post new content. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. Have a great day tomorrow, and I will see you in the next video.